past and present Manchester United players are heaping praise on the incoming Manchester United boss Ruben Amorim. The latest being Nani, former Manchester United and Portuguese international, and a current Man United and Portuguese international in Diogo Dalo. What exactly do they say about the Ruben Amorim way? Welcome to the United World Sport. I'm here to paint for you a picture of what made this guy the perfect candidate for the Manchester United big job, or you can call it the difficult job, because without a shadow of a doubt, it is indeed not a walk in the park. Now listen, Ruben Amorim, we by now know when he's uh, reporting, uh, of course we, are, we will be counting down, it's just, guys, it's just 11 days, actually it's now 10 days to us seeing Ruben Amorim, just over a week really. We should be happy and excited about it uh, because he will be joining the team as the, 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 some of the boys go out for international duty. But listen, we are talking a 39-year-old manager who has played with some of United's greatest and uh, perhaps most average players in history. Look, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you this uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, pictorial of uh, images of Ruben Amorim as an active footballer and you're looking at right there, was him playing uh, uh, for Portugal during the 2011 UEFA Under-21 Championship. Imagine, in 27, he was playing for the Under-21s in the UEFA uh, ch Championship, uh, that is for Portugal. Then, that was uh, in, uh, uh, in 2009, he was in action for Benfica. Ha there he was playing against Kylian Richardson, in 2009, you can imagine, no one would ever have expected or guessed that this kid in 20, by then he was a kid, I'm saying, uh, that in 2024, he would be the boss of the biggest football club in the world. Listen, this should be a story of inspiration, of hard work, and belief in yourself. This guy was not even the greatest of players. The biggest team he played for was Benfica, and of course the Portuguese national team where he won only 14 caps. But I uh, played mostly for uh, Belen Belenses and uh, and uh, and Braha, which eventually started to manage in 2019. But look, he's the new boss of Manchester United. That was in 2009, still up against Everton with uh, again uh, 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 with Marwan Fela uh, uh, Fellaini, who eventually became a red later. 2009, that is. Uh, then he played against uh, Man United. That was Tom uh, Tom Cleverley. Uh, that was at Old Trafford in 2012. In 2012, guys, that was 12 years ago. 2012, this guy was playing against Storm Cleverley. Uh, then uh, here is him again playing for Braha as United uh, was hosted by uh, Braha in 2012, the same year in November, playing against uh, Anderson, if you recall. Uh, Brazilian. Then this was him in 2013. In 2013, that's 11 years ago, playing with Cristiano Ronaldo in the Portuguese national team. You see Cristiano Ronaldo in there, and that's the guy putting on shirt number 10. He was a midfielder as an active footballer. This is Ruben Amorim, the current boss of Man United. There, he was playing against Christian Eriksen in 2014. Eriksen was even a better footballer. That was him competing against Eriksen in 2014. Eriksen at his prime playing for Tottenham. Uh, certainly that's why he played his best football. He's going to be managing him starting the 11th. Guys, a, a, this should be a story of life, a story of inspiration. Uh, there he was playing with Benfica as uh, he, uh, he played against the ex-red, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, Carlos uh, Cal uh, Tevez in Juventus in the 2014 Champions League 20, uh, semi-final, uh, which uh, was instrumental by the way in guiding Benfica to that semi-final. The next game he played uh, again, there he was playing against Paul Pogba, when Pogba was still playing for Juventus, it was a two-legged encounter. This is the guy, he's going to be the boss of Man United. People are talking of whether Pogba can come back or not. That will be his decision to make. There, pictured in 2014, uh, in the Europa League final between Benfica and Sevilla. Uh, again, Ruben Amorim. Then that was 2019 when he had started coaching at Abraha. Months later, a Sporting Lisbon see something in this guy and they pay 10 million euros for him. Sporting Lisbon paid 10 million euros to Benfica, to, to, to Braha rather, to give them this guy and his entire backroom staff, got them in Lisbon, who were 
had not won the Portuguese league title in 19 years. And guess what happened? That first season of his, they won it, 2020-2021. They won the Portuguese uh, La Liga, uh, uh, league title. Now, trust you me, it is true. It is not exaggerating when he's rated as one of the most and brightest, most exciting and brightest managers in or coaches in European football. This is the guy. Remember, the structure for Ineos sort of changed. That is why they brought a team around the, 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 the head coach. He's a head coach, not a manager per se. He's a head coach. His job is going to be coaching the football because there's going to be a lot of young kids he's working with and he's expected to coach them. So Ineos' structure is different. There is no uh, almighty manager the way it was with Alex Ferguson. No. The structure they started, that's why they brought in Jason Wilcox and Omar Alberada and uh, <coughs> Dan Ashworth so that there is nothing like a manager having a lot of powers. This is a head coach with the first team, first team head coach. That's the guy uh, that, that, that we are talking about. That's the new boss uh, of Manchester United. Uh, and uh, he will be joining us on the 11th. Trust you me, of course, he's, su he's subject to visa requirements. But for me, of course, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bigger uh, test, certainly, for him. It's a gamble, like I said, but a worthy gamble. A worthy gamble. Only three more games uh, for him and uh, a sporting part. Certainly, Man United supporters won't care much about those three remaining games for him. But let's get it, guys. This is the guy. This is our guy. What they say about him shows a manager who has got everything that has been lacking in the man he's replacing. Whatever he has, the personality, the presence, Nani has said that this is a guy for whom players will play. He's first of all a leader, but he just knows how to get players playing for him, and that's important. Clearly, Eric Ten Hag failed to get players play for him. Now, this is a guy who is believed to have that attribute in him, to get players rallying behind him, believe in his playing style, and want to play for him and fight for him. That's very important. That is one big score that we have in Ruben Amori. Uh, the other thing, and this was from Diogo Dalo, who is a fellow Portuguese, says, of course, what he knows about Portuguese people is that being that Portugal is a small country, uh, when they get a big opportunity, that's why by the Bruno, if you if you think about it, Portuguese players, I think with the exception of Bebe, I think Portuguese players have really uh, 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 excelled at Manchester United largely, and uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it, uh, it, it's 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 interesting because uh, okay, with the extra, uh, like I said, with the exception of Bebe, uh, I think most of them have have uh, have succeeded. Why? It's because they, being a small country, Portugal being a small country, and this is according to, to Diogo Dalo, they work hard when they get a, a big opportunity. When they get an opportunity, uh, Portuguese people work hard to try and make it and, and make it work. They have a population of not ju just over 10 million people. So that's a small population if you think about it. So little opportunities they get, they fight so hard to make it work. So that's why they are hard workers. That's why we've seen it in Bruno. That's why Diogo Dalo is one of our most consistent players. I know that Cristiano Ronaldo, in his biting expose of how rotten our club was, he made it clear that Diogo Dalo was one of the few people who are working hard. Portuguese people, if you think about it, are hard workers. And this is one thing uh, that uh, Diogo Dalo is telling us to expect from this new manager of Manchester United. Uh, when it comes to players, uh, of course, player power won't be there. Why? Because right now, like I said, this is a head coach. His is to deal with the football and performance of players day in and day out. Uh, there is not going to be issues of, and this is an Omar Berada recruit, uh, recruitment. Uh, who, I mean, they inspired Eric Ten Hag on the same day I was on the plane to Sporting to Portugal to go and tell them uh, face to face that he wants their manager. Intent, intending to buy him out, what does it take to get him? Indeed, they made it happen. This shows you that for the players, there won't be any, anyone to run to. If they want to cry around and make noise, there won't be anyone to run to. They will certainly have to be there, stay there, and fight for the manager because no one is going to be listening to them crying around. So it's, a, it's, it's an important for me uh, thing, and I think it's a good thing for us to, to believe that uh, Omar, uh, uh, that uh, 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 
Ruben Amorim will, will be getting all the backing and support and player power will certainly be neutralized of the team because if you, you either play or you're out of the team and they push you out, you just say, this one is not giving me what I want, what I expect from them. Hands you over to Dan Ashworth, Jason Wilcox, and Omar Berada to deal with you. So focus on the players who are willing to perform. There's a lot of young players that the team signed already who are hungry to come and prove themselves. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how it all happens. And we're talking a manager who has a good record working with young players. He's young himself, so everything is going to be energy, the desire, that's what you should expect. Of course, that does not mean that it's a guarantee it will work, but at least it's a breath of fresh air. It's a, 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 it, it brings hope. It's a thing of hope and you know uh, expectation, which I believe is a great thing. So that's the situation with Manchester United. Beautiful stuff that, isn't it? My name is Webb. Like, share, and subscribe. I love what I'm hearing about Ruben Amorim, of course. Uh, uh, there, are, there are more games to look at before him. Uh, we've got a, a game against Chelsea, and tomorrow, of course, I uh, will be looking ahead at that game uh, that is taking place on Sunday. Uh, but I will, uh, 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 of course, uh, 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 talk about it. Now, as I wrap up, I'm seeing a, what looks like a message from Eric Ten Hag uh, to the fans of Manchester United. And uh, this is the letter. Then Hag has written a letter to Manchester United supporters. I've just seen it now. It's a breaking thing, I should say. Let me start by thanking you. Thank you for always being there for the club, whether it was at a game far away or a tough match at Old Trafford. Your support has been unshakable. The atmosphere at Old Trafford has always been electrifying, thanks to you. I felt it many times. Also, in, a, in away games, it gave, it gave the team and me an incredible feeling to hear the United chance taking over the opponent's stadiums, whether the game was in England, Europe, or during the summer tours. I always uh, enjoyed meeting Manchester United fans throughout the world, walking the streets and being able to chat with fans in England, Europe, Asia, Australia, uh, the USA. You inspired me and radiated a strong sense of unity. That's what makes United, uh, United supporters so special. I want to thank you for giving me the feeling and for your support. I also want to thank the staff in every department of the club for their unwavering support in good times and bad. We want two trophies, achievements that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Of course, my dream was to bring more trophies to the cabinet. Unfortunately, unfortunately that dream has come to an end. I wish all Manchester United fans nothing but success, trophies, and glory. Your support and the warmth I received uh, from everyone at the club helped me feel at home. Thank you for this chapter. I uh, thank you for this chapter in my life. That's Eric Ten Hag for you. Doesn't speak about the players, but what a class act, I think, to the, to the, but to the supporters. When it comes to the players, clearly he doesn't have a lot for them. Clearly, he doesn't have a lot to tell the players. What does that show you, guys? Player Power FC. And I'll tell you with this statement, there are fans who will feel bad about the whole Eric Ten Hag sucking. Anyhow, I will be back. Let me not prolong this video. Let me catch you later, fam.